Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Go ahead, put your hands together. Let's give the Lord the praise that's so richly due to our God. Good morning to all of those that are watching us on Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube, or engaging in our live chat room. Welcome to St. Paul Online. Our digital ministers and social media influencers are ready to engage you this morning. So real quick, do me this favor. If you're on Facebook, share your personal timeline and I invite others to propose on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and text the link of this worship service to your personal network. And if you're in the chat room on our church website, click the invite button on the chat window and share this experience with others. And if you don't mind, if you're on YouTube or Facebook or our church website, uh, just let us know where you're watching us from as far as city and state is concerned. And if you want to take a picture, you can do that as well. Amen. Why don't you stand if you're able, put your hands together, give the Lord the praise in this place. We can do a whole lot better than that. Come on, put those hands together. what the Lord is going to do on this Palm Sunday. And what a day to remind the world that Jesus Christ is King. Let me try that again. What a day to remind the world that Jesus Christ is King. Amen? Amen. Good morning, St. Paul. Good morning. Good morning, St. Paul. Good morning. Anyone glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning on this Palm Sunday? God has allowed us to gather again in this same place to worship Him and to give Him some praise. Amen? Amen. Okay, maybe y'all not ready. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Y'all smiling with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. We're about to do a whole lot of that. Know that the Lord is good. He is God. Anybody excited about that? It is He who made us, and we are His, and we are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good. Somebody say that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Okay, I don't think you mean it. Somebody say that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Has it been good to you? Yes. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Can you give him a, a hand clap of praise? Just wave your hands in the air. Tell the Lord thank you for being so good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness, his truth, is to all generations. Amen? I like this part. Let's say that. For the Lord is good. Let's say it one more time. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. That needs to resonate in your spirit. For the Lord is good.
to commune with you, to abide in you. Soften our hearts to receive your love. Clear our minds so that we can hear your word. Open, your, open up our hands so that we may receive your grace. We thank you, Lord, for it all. We thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, and everything that you will do, God. We say thank you in advance. God, please accept our sacrifice of worship on this day. May it be pleasing to you, God, as we give you all the honor, glory, and praise due to you. You're mighty God. You're a mighty God. You are a mighty God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody in the house say amen. Say amen again. Say amen one more time. Okay, say amen one more time. It's really good. for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Bless me, bless me, bless me, God, and me. Death has been defeated, he is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Favor, favor, let it fall on me. I'm the conversation of all my enemies Favor, favor, God not just for me But so everyone around me can have everything they need Let all these forces with me, God have everything they need Favor, favor, let it fall on me Still I'm the conversation of all my enemies Favor, favor, God not just for me But so everyone around me can have everything they need let all these folks with me, God, have everything they need. Bless me, bless me, bless me, God, indeed. Death has been defeated, he is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these folks with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these folks with me, God, have everything they need. Birth of King is not abandoned. We got everything we need. Greater size and not forsaken. We got everything we need. Because God's a promise keeper. We got everything we need. I got a victory because I got, got everything we need. I shall live and not die. We got everything we need. Because Jehovah's by my side. We got everything we need. I tell you, he's a friend of mine. We got everything we need. Lift him up, lift him up. I got that everything we need. Lift him up, lift him up. We got everything we need. Lift him up, lift him up. We got everything we need. We got everything we need. We got everything we need. Our God's got everything we need. Our God's got everything we need. And I never shall forget. We got everything we need. He has never failed me yet. We got everything we need. Every trial, every test. We got everything we need. We bless, we bless, we bless, we bless. Our God's got everything we need. Persecuted, not abandoned. We got everything we need. Greater size and not forsaken. We got everything we need. Because God's a promise keeper. We got everything we need. I got a victory because. I got everything we need. Lift him up, lift him up. We got everything we need. Lift him up, lift him up. We got everything we need. We got everything we need. We got everything we need. Every, everything we need. I got everything we need. Every trial, every test. We got everything we need. We bless, we bless, we bless, we bless. We got everything we need. Every trial, every test. We got everything we need. We bless, we bless, we bless, we bless. I got that everything we need. Oh, 
me, bless me, bless me, God indeed. Death has been defeated, he is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these closest with me, God have everything they need. Let all these closest with me, God have everything they need. Let's celebrate our young people and let's give God praise for them. Oh, I think we can do a whole lot better than that. Let's celebrate our young people and let's give God praise for them. Amen. Good morning, disciples of St. Paul. And good morning to those that are visiting with us. We greet you in the name of our King, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. What a blessed joy it is for us to be in the house of the Lord on Palm Sunday. I need you all to just do me this small favor, if you would not mind. I want to encourage our young people, particularly our choir, as well as our ushers that are on post. Can you put your hands together and celebrate their diligence in this house? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I am so, so godly proud of them and um, just want to just give uh, Dr. Sherelle Fuller major kudos. She comes all the way from High Point, Greensboro area. That ain't no small height. Um, and to work with our children as far as this choir is concerned. So thank you so very much. We were absolutely blessed by March Gladness this year. What a blessing. Uh, Dr. E. Dewey Smith and Dr. Philip Pointer and Dr. Alan Waller blessed us tremendously. And of course, I can't thank all of those that made that possible, ranging from staff and from our associate ministers to our deacons, first impression ministry, medical team, parking ministry, media ministry, our ushers, our culinary and hospitality ministry, uh, and to the disciples that made their way to the physical space as well as the digital space. Thank you all so very, very much uh, for your participation and for your prayers. God is to be praised. Listen today, after our mon uh, uh, morning worship experience, uh, head to the gym so that you can meet your deacon. Uh, this is a meet and greet, uh, and so you can meet your deacon today. I want you all to do me one favor real quick. First of all, I'm told that Sister Deacon Barbara Lee is in the house. Is that true? Where, where is she? Hey, can you stand up there? Can you stand up? Hey Amen. she had been sick, been out for quite some time. And the Lord has allowed for her to be back with us. We thank God for you. Continue to remain standing. All of our deacons, I want you to stand so that people will see who they're getting ready to meet. All of our deacons that are present, would you stand? Would you stand? Amen. 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 So thank you, deacons. You may take your seats. So listen, if you don't know who your deacon is, go to the gym, get to meet them. Uh, if you have moved, you probably will be changing who your deacon may be based on your zip code. So go find out who your deacon is. Or if you just want to get reacquainted, you can do that as well. Amen. I also want to mention that on this Wednesday, this Wednesday, we'll be having Kaya uh, at 630 as they talk about family matters. And that should be an interesting conversation. They're going to be dealing with things such as imposter syndrome, uh, unauthentic relationship with people and question how faithfully to follow God and still have fun achieving personal goals. So that's going to be taking place this Wednesday, 630 online for conversation. And then I want to uh, just lift up on Saturday, April the 6th, Reverend Joshua Jordan and Reverend Eric Edwards will be hosting a college tour for our teenagers who are in the 8th to 12th grade, beginning at 12 noon. All participants will tour Johnson C. Smith University 
and the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And for more information, see Reverend uh, Joshua or Reverend Eric. And if they are here, I'm going to ask that they would stand at this time. Amen. So see these two uh, gentlemen. Of course, uh, Reverend Joshua is over our children and youth ministry, and Reverend Eric Edwards is over our college and young adult ministry, and so I uh, see them. It's never too young to start getting our people to start thinking about higher education. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I also just want to mention that college ain't for everybody. All right. So, you know, there is trade schools and other things to give consideration to. And you'd be surprised. It's a whole lot of plumbers and electricians that are making some major dollars. Amen. Amen. Get a trade with your hand as well. So we push both head and heart. And as I say that, we have scholarship applications that are open right now. All applications must be submitted online. Uh, through our church website. So if you're a high school student planning to attend college, university, or trade school, continue undergrad student, or a student starting a master's program, you can uh, fill out an application for a uh, scholarship for consideration. The deadline is May 31st, May 31st um, uh, of this year, uh, as far as that is concern. We will, of course, be having Bible study this week as well as our quick 15. We didn't have it last week due to the fact that we were in a revival. So we will be going back to quick 15 on Wednesday and then Bible study on Thursday. I also want to mention, I also want to mention that this Friday at noon, and I usually don't do this, uh, but I want to mention this, that if you're not doing anything for seven last words, uh, go to Trinity United Church of Christ. Go to their website or Facebook page. I will be preaching uh, Seven Last Words in Chicago, Illinois for my good friend and brother, the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss. I'm the only thorn among six roses. Somebody catch that on the way home. Uh, uh, I'm the only brother among six uh, dynamic, phenomenal preaching sisters that will be sharing as far as seven last words at Trinity United Church of Christ. So if you want to check out your pastor, go to their website or either their Facebook page or YouTube channel. Check me out as far as that's concerned. And we're going to have one of the most gifted preachers that's going to bless us for our church anniversary this year on the fourth Sunday of April. Uh, none other than the president of Lot Carey and the pastor of the Christ Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart is going to be preaching our church anniversary this year. Amen. 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 And she is a preaching phenom. And so uh, we're looking forward to her blessing us as far as that is concerned. She, again, is the president of Lot Carey. And, of course, she has our total support, and I want to do something special as far as that day is concerned. We want you to be mindful that on that particular Sunday, on that particular Sunday, we're asking all adults to give at least $124, a dollar for each year, as far as our church being in existence. Uh, $124 each adult. So you can start pulling together your pennies, dimes, nickels, quarters, and dollars right now. Uh, that's above your tithes and offerings as far as that is concerned. As your pastor, I'm going to do $1,240. I'm going to give $10 for each year because uh, y'all don't know how happy I am to be the pastor of the St. Paul Church. So, so uh, I'm going to give um, uh, $1,240, but we're asking all adults um, that, that, that can to uh, give at least $124 above. Somebody say above. above. Your tithes and offerings, all right? That's above your tithes and offerings. And we look forward to the Lord blessing us on that particular day. Uh, I don't know if... Um, let me, if I could, um, uh, I want to take this up to, is Brother Eric Thompson in the house? Is Eric here? He's not here? Okay. Well, I'll wait until next week. Uh, I'm going, well, no, I'll go ahead and introduce, make that presentation right now. So, 
Next year, somebody say next year. Starting in January, we're going to be celebrating our church's 125th anniversary. And we're going to do it up. When I say we're going to do it up, we're going to do it up. Deacon Eric Thompson and Sister Lisa Duncan will be co-chairing the committee at large. And of course, that's the core committee. There are going to be several subcommittees that you would have opportunity, if you so desire, to serve. And uh, we're going to be starting to have meetings probably sometime in either April or May as far as the core committee and then, of course, fanning out into the various subcommittees. And so I'm going to let you all know how that's going to flow, but I'm going to present those two persons um, maybe next Sunday if they're in the house so that you'll see who's going to be providing leadership as far as that's concerned. Of course, Pierre Charis and I, we're the honorary co-chairs um, as far as that's concerned, but we're looking forward to you all uh, being blessed as far as the different events that we're going to be having in next year. And so all throughout one, the 125th uh, anniversary, I'm letting you know right now, each month we're going to have a national preacher in some shape, form, or fashion that's going to come through and bless us as far as the word of God is concerned. Um, because guess what? St. Paul is that type of church. Amen? Amen? Let me say it again. St. Paul is that type of church. And so there are not a whole lot of churches that celebrate 125 years. And we want to do this right, and of course we're going to have a gala as far as that's concerned and other activities throughout the year. Uh, but you'll be hearing more information, but we're going to kick that off as far as the 1st of January 2025 and celebrate through all throughout the year as far as that's concerned. So uh, pray for us and pray with us. And here's, I'm letting you know right now, here is the goal. Uh, that, that we're setting as far as a special offering is concerned. For our 125th anniversary, we want to raise $125,000. Amen. Amen. We want to raise $125,000. And so... Um, uh, and, and, and that's more than achievable. It's more than achievable. Look at your neighbor and say, we can do it. Amen. Amen. It is more than achievable. So we're going to raise $125,000 as far as our church anniversary is concerned. Uh, and, and we're going to start giving toward that in January. But we want to raise $125,000. I would love to have all of it given on our church anniversary as far as the fourth Sunday of, of next year in April is concerned. But uh, we'll see how that flows. But we want to raise $125,000. Got a lot of work we need to do around here. And um, uh, a lot of work that we need to do. And so this will be some wonderful, wonderful base as far as doing that work. All right. I've shared my observations. We solicit your prayers. This is Passion Week. This is Holy Week. And so we want to govern ourselves accordingly. Next Sunday will be Resurrection Sunday. And we're looking forward to the Lord doing something extraordinary in this place. Listen, as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, there are several prayer concerns I want to bring before you as far as today is concerned. And we want to make you mindful of that. The family of Rakia Stevenson, the niece of Sharon Easter, those services were held, will be held this Tuesday, March the 26th at Rutledge and Bingham Mortuary in Statesville, North Carolina. The visitation is, is at 10 and the service is at 11. The family of Harold Holmes III, the son of Harold Holmes II, those no services will be Thursday, March 28th at the Peaceful Rest Funeral Home in Topeka, Kansas. Um, at 11 a.m. This is from one of our uh, long distant disciples, uh, Sister Dunny Miles. We also want to lift up the family of Carwell Pate, 
Brother Dolores Thompson. Those services were Friday at A.E. Greer's and Sons Mortuary. And we want to lift up the family of Joanne Gaithan, the mother of Cassandra Gaithan. Those services were this past Tuesday here at the church. And the family of Robert William Mitchell, the father-in-law of Yvonne Smith. We also want to lift up, uh, as far as sick and shut-in are concerned, and ushers, if you need to, you can start sending some people to the balcony. We have some space down front as well, uh, and persons can sit on the front row. Uh, we want to lift up Reverend Rosie of Blue, who had surgery this past week, Donata Cuffey, Gloria Singleton, who's been in the hospital, Sister Thomasina Drummond. We want to continue to lift up Brother Jerry Clark, as well as Deacon Rod Milliken. We want to continue to lift those persons up as they continue to deal with their own health challenges. Sister Elva Taylor, who's one of our newer disciples, we want to cover them in prayer, as well as the names that will be scrolling up and down the list. And so... As we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, um, be mindful of those prayer concerns and bring your own prayer concerns as well. And again, we celebrate Deacon Barbara Lee being in the house this morning, and we thank God for her presence. Amen. I'm going to ask that Reverend Linda Higgins will come. She's going to take us to the throne of grace, and then we'll proceed with the rest of our worship experience. our refuge and our strength. The author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, we come to you with humble hearts, thanking you for a day that we have never seen and never will see again, God. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the ability to give your name on the glory, honor, and praise on this day. God, you heard the petitions of our hearts. You heard the names that were called. And I ask right now in the name of Jesus as you touch each and every person that was listed. Touch each and every person that's on our hearts and our minds today, God. For you know what each and every one of us stands in need of. And you are able to do all things but fail. We know that you will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that which we can think, ask, or even imagine, God. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you do it. Touch each and every person represented here today, God. Touch their households. God, we love you so much that we know that we can entrust our faith in you. We hope in you. Even when the world seems dark, God, you are our light in the darkness. And we say thank you, God. Thank you for just being the kind of God that is merciful, that is gracious, that is loving, that is almighty and magnificent. We come this whole week referencing who you are and thanking you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thanking you for making a way right back to you, God. We thank you for that you cared so much about us that you thought about it and said, I'm going to send my son to save each and every one who believes in you, God, and we stand here saying thank you. God, we love you. We honor you. We praise your holy name. We thank you that you said your word. You would never leave us nor forsake us, and we stand on that, God. We stand on the promise that you said by your stripes we are healed, and we stand on that, God. We stand on everything that you have promised to us, remembering you, reverencing you, and loving you. We thank you on this day, God, this Palm Sunday. We celebrate Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, God. For we know at the end of the week, we know what happens. And we already in advance say thank you for providing a way back to you. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. Amen again. Amen one more time. Amen. If you believe that God is answering that prayer, can you give God praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, it's time to give. Amen. Amen. It is time. It is time to give. It is time to give. It is time to give. And as persons are coming in, um, we just want to remind you it's time to give.
Had to do some check real quick. All right. At this particular time, we're getting ready to receive the Lord's offering. And so it's prepared to give. There's several ways you can give here at St. Paul Church. First, of course, is by mailing check or, or money order to the church at 1401 Allen Street, Charlotte, 28205. Or you can also drop all check, cash, money order here at the church. Uh, call the church office at 704-334-5309. Make sure someone is here to receive that offering. You can also give through the app called Givelify. And if you don't have that app on your smart device, download that app, connect it to your favorite credit card in three clicks you can give. You can also give through our church website, through ACS or Church Life. And if you have a physical offering, you can give that offering in just a moment uh, as far as that's concerned. So if you are giving a physical offering, if you're giving a digital offering, or if you have already given your offering, uh, if you will, place your offering in your right hand or raise your right hand if you have already given. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come and we thank you for this wonderful, marvelous opportunity to partner with you in the act of worship through giving. And we give not grudgingly, nor out of necessity, but cheerfully. Why? Because you love the cheerful giver. For God, those that are practicing the discipline of giving tithes and offerings, bless according to your word. For those who may not be doing that but are giving something, stretch their faith and help them to understand that, that as they give biblically, you will bless them biblically. And then for those who feel like they don't have to give anything, God, would you convict them and help them to understand that we all have something we can give. Now, Lord, take these gifts of ours, multiply them in a Godful way so that your word, your witness, your work, and your worship can go forth through the tribe known as St. Paul. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those on the outer edges of the aisle, if you would, look down, grab the basket, pass to the inner aisle, and you can give as far as that's concerned. selection from our children.
If you want to close your eyes, go ahead and close them. But I want you to focus upon Jesus now. For he alone is worthy to be worshipped and worthy to be adored. Can I get an amen on that? Can I get an amen on that? The Bible records in Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 11. It says, when the wise men came to the place where baby Jesus was, it says, when they saw him, they fell down and worshipped him. Everybody say, fell down. They bowed down and they worshipped him. And the scripture says, and then their treasures were opened. And they presented unto him gifts. And therein is a glorious revelation of the Spirit. And it is this. That when you and I will humble ourselves and begin to worship. The treasure that is in this earthen vessel begins to open up. Somebody say yes. And the gifts of the Spirit of God that are within us begin to flow. I believe if we will worship God with our whole heart, our whole spirit and soul, God's presence and power will begin to move in this place. People can be healed and delivered even while we're worshiping and recording. Does anybody believe that with me? I want you to lift up your hands now and begin to lift up your voices. That's right. Just begin to open your own mouth and begin to worship Him. Out of your spirit, just begin to bless His heart. Holy name, if he's done anything for you, just begin to worship. Just begin to worship. That's right, begin to worship. Begin to bless his name. Begin to bless his name. Come on and bless his name.
sent a redeemer. God with us. God with us, the living truth. And what a friend we have in you. You are the living awesome word. Awesome ruler. Awesome ruler. Gentle redeemer. God with us.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is great and greatly to be praised. And uh, I just want to again thank Dr. Sherelle uh, Fuller for the time that she invests with them. And Sister Gloria, thank you so very much. Amen. We are in the process of uh, letting our young people do what the Lord has given them the place and space to do. Let me just say, um, someone made the query one time why we don't have youth and children church every Sunday. And I am of the persuasion that children need to know how to behave in regular church. And they need to be able to use their gifts in regular church. So we have the space and place for them to have youth and children church two Sundays out of I mean two Sundays out of the month. And the first and the fourth Sunday, they're with the grown folks. And first Sunday, of course, is our communion Sunday where we serve everybody. And then the fourth Sunday, uh, whenever Scott and Sherelle decide they utilize their gifts. So that's how we flow here at St. Paul. Um, studies have shown that when you have churches that's all they have as far as children and youth church when they get old older and they age out of youth church they don't come back to church studies show that so uh, I want our young people to know how to behave and govern themselves in the main worship experience but also understand that we create space for them to learn at that level as well all right Mark the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Mark the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Um, that's the scripture that we're going to share as far as today is concerned. Mark chapter 11, 1 through 11. It reads like this. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and he said to them, go into the village opposite you and as soon as you enter it, you will find a coat tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord has need of it and immediately he will send it here. I'll stop right there. Um, uh, you can read the rest at your leisure, uh, but I want to, if I could, lift for our consideration sermonically this morning. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I have discovered that God is absolutely incredible in the way that God will use God's people to do some strange and unusual things to get God's point across when it comes to the saga of redemption. When Adam and Eve messed us up in the Garden of Eden, it capitulated humanity into dire straits and harmful situations whereby only God can rescue us from ourselves. What is perplexing is how God and God's infinite wisdom will take the very people who needs to be redeemed and use us to bring to pass God's plan, program, and purposes. God has a way of taking the broken and busted, the messed up and disgusted, the frail and fragile, the forgotten and exiled, and use us like pieces in a jigsaw puzzle to bring to culmination God's purposes, plans, and projects where ultimately we can bring God glory, honor, and praise. In other words, God will take our successes and our failures, our well-intentioned plan, and even our devious plots, and use it to get us to the place where God will have for us to be. Interestingly, God will use strange people and unusual methods to get God's message across. And it may seem small and subtle and even insignificant and will cause us to wonder if the thing we're doing will make any difference anyhow. And it will cause us to pose this question, why are you doing this? 
In the text, Jesus is preparing to go into Jerusalem and he has summoned two of his disciples to go to the next village. Find a coat that has never been written and bring it to Jesus. And if the owner asks, uh, why are you doing this? Tell them the master has need of it. The coat was not under the personal stewardship of Jesus, but Jesus had access to it. It reminds me how the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein. All Jesus had to do was say, I need it. And there are some scholars who contend that the owner of the coat was one of the followers of Jesus. Therefore, it was not a problem for him to give Jesus his coat to, to ride. When the follower made the inquiry, the disciples responded that Jesus needed it. Jesus is on his way to Calvary and Jesus still desires to have us to participate in the divine saga of redemption. Jesus is on his way to the cross and yet it did not prevent him from involving other folks in the story of redemption. However, after all that Jesus had done, he healed the sick, he gave sight to the blind, he enabled the lame to walk, he empowered the mute to talk, he fed 5,000 men beside women and children with five loaves and two fish, he even raised the dead. After all that Jesus had done, they still hung him. They saw all the three things Jesus did and yet it did nothing to change their minds about who Jesus really is. When Jesus died at Calvary, God demonstrated who Jesus was because at high noon it transformed into midnight. The earth went into convulsions and reeled and rocked like a drunk man on Sorok. The moon had a celestial hemorrhage and dripped away in blood. Stars fell from their silvery socket. The graves were split open looking like plowed fields and the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom and the only positive thing that was done at the hill called Calvary came from the lips of the Roman soldier that said, surely this must be the Son of God. But for the most part, after Jesus was hung on a cross, nothing really changed. Things went on as usual. Everything Jesus said was backed up with his deeds. And people who were around when Jesus lived, they saw a living sermon every time he moved. However, most people still did not believe he was the Messiah. They still held on to their preconceived, small-minded, mistaken notions about who Jesus is. And may I dare submit that not much has changed in 2024. We are no different now because we have many who say, I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one any day. However, unless our hearts and our minds are open as well as our eyes, then what we see will not make much difference because God is still moving and God's word is coming to pass every day and people still will not accept who God is and people still will not believe that Jesus is the son of God and people still will not accept the free gift of salvation. We see it every day and it still doesn't make us act any better. We see it every day and we're not living any differently. All around us we see the evidence of sin and a decadent lifestyle. Just look at what's happening in our reality. The Bible tells us that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, and we have Russia and Ukraine on one front. Israel ravaging the Gaza Strip on the other. China is beating war drums against Taiwan. North Korea continues to test missiles as far as the Pacific Ocean is concerned. We see it in the fact 
fact that terrorist cells are still prevalent. ISIS is still terrorizing the world because of the massacre that just happened in Moscow. The Houthi rebels are wreaking havoc in the Red Sea, messing up the shipping lanes. We see it in the escalation of violence, not only in Charlotte, but all across the country. Atlanta, New York, Washington, D.C., Columbia, South Carolina, Chicago, Los Angeles, Houston, Dallas, Phoenix, and even Salt Lake City. Violence continues to rise as far as our communities are concerned. Weather-wise, we have hurricanes that have become more intense. Drought conditions are affecting approximately 40% of the farmland in America, as well as various parts of Africa, Asia, and Europe. The North Pole polar caps are melting at an alarming rate. Global warming will continue to mess up our weather patterns, and you got crazy folks in the Republican Party saying there's no such thing as climate change. In our communities, we see the impact of drug addiction, of fentanyl, meth, and other opioids devastating the lives of loved ones, along with crack and cocaine. Alcoholism is tearing families apart, and now gambling is draining families of their financial resources. Cancer seems as prevalent as the common cold these days. COVID is still plaguing society, and people have become wiser but weaker, smarter but meaner, and richer but more ratchet. And in spite of all the preaching and teaching, people still live with crazy habits, ungodly ways, and hellish attitudes. God is giving us a wake up call. God is sending warning in bold neon letters and a news flash that if we don't get our act together, we will fall short. While God's love is unconditional and while God's grace is more than sufficient, eternal life is conditional. And unfortunately, people still will not change. But on the other hand, aren't you glad that we know of those who have experienced the redemptive, regenerative, renewing, refreshing, revitalizing, restorative, rejuvenating, and reviving power of being in relationship with Jesus Christ? Don't you know a few folks who have been changed for the better because they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? We know people who have been healed by the power of God and can testify if it had not been for the Lord on their side, there's no telling where they would be right now. We know people who have bounced back from shame, sorrow, and setbacks, who have dealt with tragedies, trials, and tribulations, who can declare with boldness and audacity, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We know of people who have been strung out on drugs and so addicted until nobody but Jesus could have delivered them. And now they're walking testimonies of God's grace and mercy. They can give a testimony about how the Lord came into their lives, uh, turned their lives around. They can tell how the Lord made a way somehow, how God delivered them from the abyss of despair, how Jesus saved us from the pit of hell. There are those who know that Jesus can and will make a difference in their lives. As a matter of fact, I believe I got a few folks that know that being a part of the church can make a difference in your life as well. I'm sick and tired of the folks dogging out the church. The church is the only thing that Jesus said he's coming back for. And yet, and yet, many Many will not be persuaded to give God a chance. You can have a minister live a sainted life. We can have a spouse much better than we deserve. 
We can have a friend who sticks closer than a brother or a sister. We can have persons of integrity and honor and character and faith. But if our minds are not in the right place, we will still be suspicious and distrusting no matter what we see. We will always, Eric, be trying to find the chink in the armor. The flaw in the suit or the dress. The weakness in the person. And when our minds are so twisted by the culture, we will see people and life from twisted perspectives, no matter how good they are. Now watch this. I'm getting ready to say something that's getting ready to make somebody mad. Even Jesus himself ain't going to save everybody. That's why I no longer get bent out of shape about people talking about they want to see a sermon because even when you see one, you don't know what you're seeing. Plus, I'm reminded that faith comes by hearing, uh uh-oh, and hearing the word of, help me preach this thing, somebody. Hearing the word of God. If we see a sermon and our minds are twisted, we need to pray for God to open our minds, to understand, open our hearts, to receive it and give us the courage to live by it. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so here in the text, Jesus is providing a living sermon. He is giving a living word by having his disciples to go and get a coat for him to ride. He gives uh, specified instructions that if anyone asks, why are you doing this? Tell them the Lord has need of it. Uh, Have any of you ever asked, why am I doing this? Some usher will ask himself or herself, why am I doing this while standing at the door trying to perform a service of hospitality and yet you got to deal with somebody who is rude and discourteous with a funky attitude and they'll take the smile off your face. Somebody in the hospitality ministry asks, why am I doing this? You got a white smock on while everybody is dressed in their finest, uh, sitting in church doing worship while you're preparing food in the back and then you have folks coming to the gym trying to run everything, take food and pack it like they're going to live off it for two weeks and then they get mad when you tell them ain't nobody else taking nothing until everybody been served. I know what I'm talking about. Ah, Somebody's saying, why am I doing this when you work in the food pantry and you got to deal with persons who think they are entitled to what we do for them under the delusion that the government's giving us money to run our program government ain't giving us a doggone thing and at times we'll fuss, cuss and create commotion. Somebody is asking why am I doing this when you're paying your tithes and you're giving an offering, you're making financial pledges to support the ministry but you're the one that seems like you're suffering somebody is asking why am I doing this as you sing in the choir, the songs of Zion and yet folks want to be entertained by your work and why they should be joining in in the worship, they sit with their arms folded their legs crossed looking at you saying jump make me happy jump entertain me why are you doing this when you're teaching Sunday school and very few people show up you teach Bible study and folks look at you crazy why are you doing this my God Sunday after Sunday as I preach the undulterated word of God and sometimes it seems like folks come in and they leave the same way they came in unchanged unchallenged unconverted and still mean as the devil. Why are we doing this when we volunteer our times, our talents, and our gifts and we're still criticized, still talked about, still dogged out. Nobody keeps their word. Our efforts look like they're unappreciated, unrewarded, unrecognized, and undervalued. Why are we doing this when we try to live for Jesus, try to do the right things, when it seems like those that are wicked are prospering, while those that are trying to keep the word of God are 
suffering while those that do whatever they want to seem like they get the best house, the best spouse, the best boo, the best bae. And here we are. We come to church Sunday after Sunday. We read our Bible. We study the word. We have devotional. But our spouse is crazy as the devil. We're catching hell on all of our fronts. Our money is funny. Our change is strange. And we're wondering if we're going to make it. Uh, somebody is asking, why do I do this when those in the culture don't even support the church, but they're always dogging out the church? But I'm here to tell you, bro, if the church wasn't here, you wouldn't know it. Why? Why? <laughs> Why are we doing all? Why y'all play the saxophone, the guitar, and the drums? Sherelle, why are you continue to work with the kids? Why, why are we doing this? Text answers it. It's very simple. First reason that we do it is because the Lord needs it. The, the, the Lord needs it, not in the sense that if you didn't do it, it wouldn't get done. Because our God is so bad that if you don't praise him, he can empower the rocks to cry out. In the text, in the text, Jesus, Reverend Higgins, sent his followers to get a coat for him to ride into Jerusalem. And when they asked, why are they taking the coat? They were to say these exact words, because the Lord has need of it. Interestingly, you all, Jesus has needs. Jesus in his humanity had needs. Because if you read the text, you will notice Jesus did not create a cult on the spot. He sent his followers to find one. And Jesus desires workers who will do what he needs for them to do to bring him honor, glory, and majesty. God desires those who don't mind serving, who don't mind giving him praise, who don't mind working, who don't mind believing, who don't mind giving, who don't mind worshiping so that our God can be exalted. The Lord has need of it, not in the sense he can't do without us, because trust me, God was doing quite fine before any of us showed up, and God going to be all right when we're dead and gone. Uh, remember, brothers and sisters, God is not dependent upon us, but rather God desires us to be involved so we can get to know God on a deeper and more intimate level. It is to demonstrate how an awesome God can take our limits limitations and our defects and get glory out of it. Why do we give tithes? Because the Lord has need of our little bit even as he needed a little boy's lunch of two fish and five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 men beside women and children. Why do we give our last dime? Because the Lord needs our sacrifice to encourage and teach others about putting their faith in him rather than in their things. Why do we sing in the choir? because the Lord has need for our voices even as he needed the witness of the Samaritan woman so she could spread the good news about come see a man who told me everything about myself why do we preach because the Lord has need for men and women to understand how God can take in a fallen frail broken piece of clay and bring forth something redemptive transformative and liberating why are we faithful when others are 
not because in times of betrayal denials and desertion the Lord needs somebody who will stand at the foot of the cross uh, like the uh, disciple John uh, and his mother Mary and the other sisters why do we keep coming to church because the Lord needs somebody that's going to carry out his work uh, until he returns and the Lord established the church and it is his church we are his people and if we do what he tells us to do do I have anybody know he will give us reward not only in the hereafter but in the here and now can I let some man woman boy or girl know your contribution is not insignificant your contribution is not meaningless your contribution is not unnoticed God sees it and God will honor it and this is why we do what we do because we want to bring God glory honor and praise this is why we do what we do because we want the Lord's name to be exalted this is why we do what we do even when our names aren't called even when we're not recognized even when folks dog us out because serving the Lord I'm trying not to run out my shoes right now will pay off not only after a while but do I have anybody that know it'll pay off in the here and now can I continue to press my claim why, why, why do we do this why do we do this? Because we have been enlisted to be part of the supporting cast. We, we, we're part of the supporting cast. Let me remind us that we are not the star. There's only one star. And his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, th th there's only one star in the story of redemption and his name is Jesus Christ as a matter of fact uh, uh, he, he's referred to as the bright and morning star there's only one star name is Jesus Christ uh, and when you look at the saga of redemption God the father is the executive producer the Holy Ghost is the director and Jesus is the star you and I we're part of the supporting cast and the story of redemption is a saga that has a supporting cast of billions of folks Jesus is the star because the saga of redemption is centered around his faithfulness, his righteousness, his obedience, his majesty, and his sovereignty. It is centered around the fact that God the Father, God the Creator, sent him into the world to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. On that Palm Sunday, 1995 years ago, Jesus had the leading role, but he also had a supporting cast. Some were named, some were unnamed, but they were not the star. Jesus is the star. And even though Jesus is the star, Palm Sunday would not have been the same without the supporting cast. Don't think what you do goes unnoticed by our God. Listen, we don't know who those two unnamed disciples were, but somebody had to go and get the coat. As a matter of fact, they were part of the supporting cast. The owner of the coat was part of the supporting cast. The coat was part of the supporting cast. Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord, were part of the supporting cast. The costumes were the coats that they were dropping on the ground. That was part of the supporting cast. Palm Sunday would not have been much without the supporting cast because it was their shouts that shook the city. And that's why we do what we do because the Lord got to have a supporting cast and you and I who have been saved by the blood of the lamb who have been blood bought and blood washed we're part of the supporting cast we are not the star but we still got a part to play you and I got a part in the story of redemption and that ought to be enough to make you run and shout that's why you're an officer you're part of the supporting cast 
cast. That's why you teach Sunday school. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you are a deacon. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you are a board member. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you're part of first impression. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you're part of the hospitality culinary ministry. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you count money in the finance committee. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you work the parking lot. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you put food on the plates. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you serve as an usher. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you sing in the choir. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you work in the food pantry. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why you serve on committees. You work in ministry. You play your instruments and you even preach the gospel because you're part of the supporting cast. That's why we raise money for missions for lot carry. We're part of the supporting cast. That's why you give your tithes and offerings. You're part of the supporting cast. That's why we show up at 1401 Allen Street. Come here Sunday after Sunday. Lift up holy hands. Throw back our heads and give God praise because we're part of the supporting cast. And I don't know about anybody else but we know what happens after Palm Sunday. Now if the folks back then could holler Hosanna. Blessed be the name that comes in the what in the name of the Lord. If we could, if they could holler Hosanna back then, we ought to be able to give God praise right now because we know how the story ends. <laughs> I really wish I had a few folks in the house that weren't too afraid or ashamed. They holler Hosanna. They took off their coats. They waved their prom branches and they announced Jesus to be the king. And I know that we know better. He's not only the king of the Jews, but he's king of kings and he's Lord of lords. And you and I every now and then ought to be able to lift up our hands, celebrate who God is, and remind ourselves that every time we come in here, it is not what we want but it's what he deserves it is not what we want but it's what he desires and I know I'm getting ready to mess up some of y'all but church and worship ain't for you it's for our God so if you are going around saying I ain't getting nothing out of church the reason you ain't getting nothing cause you ain't putting nothing in cause nothing from nothing needs nothing and it ain't about you anyhow it's about him so while you want to sit there like a bump on the log I need a few folks to ask to take your spirit and lift up those hands, throw back your head and give our God the praise that he deserves. Let me let me let me let me press my case and end this thing. Uh, finally we do what we do because we know how the story going to turn out. Boy, y'all going to learn how to shout on Bible one day. We, we do what we do because we know how the story going to turn out. Let me say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. We do what we do because we know how the story is going to turn out. All right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five. Um, Jesus enters Jerusalem riding on the back of a donkey. He is greeted with an ovation that Caesar would have been jealous of. This is called Jesus' triumphal entry. But after that, it all went downhill. <laughs> uh, 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 let me say it again. It's called Jesus' triumphal entry. But after that Sunday, it went all downhill. Let me try it one more time because y'all looking at me suspect. Jesus comes in to the applause of the crowd. And on that Monday, it starts going all downhill. Cause, 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 cause on that Monday, uh, yeah, he goes to the temple and he takes a whip and he drives the money changers out. And when he started messing with the folks' money, uh, somebody said, we got to get this joker. 
because he's messing up our commerce. And then on Tuesday, he was in a battle with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he was baffling them with statements because he was now asserting the essence of who he was. And by that Wednesday, they had started plotting and saying, yeah, we got to get him out of here. By that Thursday, Judas had already gotten his money in his hands, and he was getting ready to betray our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Then on that Thursday night, they show up in the Mount of, uh, of Olives uh, after he had been in the Garden of Gethsemane sweating so much that it looked like great drops of blood uh, asking God if it is possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not my will but thine will be done if Jesus uh, didn't like the way that things were going then we have to be honest at times we won't like the way that things are going but aren't you glad we can go to God uh, with our honesty and with our faith and with our faults and even though God may say no we're not going to change the plans we're going to keep it the way that it is the Bible says that Jesus when he went to God the Father three times with that plea after he got up he said we might as well be about the business right now and then Judas shows up and betrays him with a kiss and Peter cuts off Malchus ear and Jesus is so much God that he took the time to put Malchus ear back on why did he do that? Maybe because he knew faith came by hearing and hearing the word of God. And Malchus couldn't hear if he didn't have an ear. Uh, oh, they took him from judgment hall to judgment hall uh, and they marched him up the Via Della Rosa. We know uh, how the story is going to end. Uh, now, as I get ready to close uh, and I'm getting ready to make this turn uh, because somebody needs to understand uh, that Jesus did not have a good Friday. As a matter of fact, it was a bad Friday. We call it Good Friday because it's good for us, but it wasn't good for Jesus. We call it Good Friday because we know that he paid the price for our redemption, but it wasn't good for Jesus. No, as a matter of fact, it was a bad Friday. As a matter of fact, it was a hellified Friday. As a matter of fact, it was a horrific Friday. As a matter of fact, none of us in here could have handled the Friday that Jesus went through. Y'all got to forgive me, but I feel a turn coming right now. Uh, but do I have anybody in the house uh, that know that that Friday may have been good for us, but it was not good uh, for our Jesus. Uh, but yet, as we look at what all he went through, uh, he could not have had a bad Friday uh, unless he made a triumphal entry into the city. Uh, and so before I even uh, talk about how he died on Friday, can I just situate us and help us understand that we know how the story is going to end and I don't want to jump ahead and talk about how he got up early one Sunday morning but we know how the story is going to end and if I could take a little homiletical license and do it my way because we know he made a triumphal entry into Jerusalem 1995 years ago uh, but y'all he's gonna make another triumphal entry into the city known as the New Jerusalem and I don't know about anybody else uh, but I want to be in that number and do I have anybody that want to be in that number we know how the story is going to end because when he makes his entry into the New Jerusalem and they crown him king of kings and lord of lords and the judge of judges and the great I am and the sovereign God as a matter of fact Paul wrote that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is lord to the glory of God the father I don't know about you but I'm glad I know 
how the story is going to end uh, because I want to be in the number uh, when the 24 elders throw down their crowns uh, at the feet of Jesus. Uh, I want to be in the number uh, when the cherubims and the pharisims uh, and the four living creatures uh, holler out holy, holy, holy uh, Lord God Almighty. Uh, I want to be in the number uh, when the angelic hosts sing a new song uh, and we'll be able to sing our song uh, I have been redeemed. Uh, I want to be in the number uh, when the 144,000 uh, who have been sealed to the day of redemption uh, shall give our God the praise. Uh, but then there's another number uh, that no man can number uh, who have come through the great tribulation uh, who've had their robes uh, washed in the blood of the lamb. Uh, I found my place uh, because I'm in that number. Uh, and is there anybody here uh, that want to be in the number uh, where God will uh, wipe away uh, every tear uh, from your eyes? Uh, I want to be in the number uh, where the wicked will cease from troubling uh, and the weary shall be at rest. Uh, I want to be in the number uh, where there's no more hunger, uh, no more sickness, uh, no more pain, uh, no more trials, uh, no more trouble. Uh, no more tribulation no more headaches uh, no more heartaches uh, no more lying uh, no more dying uh, I want to be in the number uh, where the wicked will cease from troubling uh, and the weary shall be at rest uh, I want to be in the number uh, where we can go and pull leaves uh, from that tree uh, that's good uh, for the healing of the nations uh, I want to be in the number uh, when they crown him with the celestial crown of the universe do I have anybody in the house this morning that want to be in that number I want to be in the number where I can sing my song I have been redeemed and do I have any redeemed folks in the house right now that ain't afraid nor ashamed to give God praise cause when you look back over your life and you think things over you got reason to give God praise you've been through the storm you've been through the rain you've had heartaches and headaches and you've come through some pain but I need some folks that can give God praise despite your pain because your pain is a pathway to your praise cause when you think about the stuff that should have killed you but you're still here that's enough yes sir, to give God praise but I don't know about anybody else but I want to be in the number when Jesus Christ our Savior Jesus Christ our Redeemer Jesus Christ our Emancipator Jesus Christ our Liberator Jesus Christ our God Jesus Jesus Christ, uh, our healer. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, our friend, uh, is crowned King of Kings, uh, Lord of Lords, uh, the greatest sovereign. Uh, I want to be in that number. Uh, I bid you all adieu. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, but do I have anybody uh, in the house right now uh, that'll help me close this thing uh, with the praise on your lips? Oh, uh, hell! the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him 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 Lord of all now how can we crown him I dare you right now uh, to give him his crown. Uh, give him a praise uh, if he's blessed you. Uh, give him a praise uh, if he kept you. Uh, give him a praise uh, if he saved you. Uh, give him a praise uh, if he fed you. Uh, give him a praise uh, if he freed you. Uh, give him a praise uh, if he delivered you. Uh, crown him. Uh, crown him uh, with your praise. Uh, I'll see you 
y'all later. But lift up your hands. Throw back your head. Open up your mouth. And bless his name. Because he's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. 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 Deacons come, deacons come. Be seated if you can. Why, 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 why we do this? Why we do this? Cause the Lord has need of your praise and the Lord has need of your work like our dance team did a few moments ago the Lord has need for somebody who ain't afraid nor ashamed to give God praise in a culture that push a false Jesus. I want to, at this time, give any man, woman, boy, or girl that's here right now an opportunity to either connect with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or connect with this church. And I just want to lead you, if I could, in a short prayer, a prayer of brand new life, prayer of a brand new start and, and if that prayer if that prayer hits you I want you to make a decision for you to Christ or church so just repeat after me Lord I thank you for coming down and doing for me what I could not do for myself God I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he died on a cross. And I believe one Sunday morning he got up from the dead. And I believe one day he's coming back. But until then, send your Holy Spirit into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Help me be the person you want me to be I surrender to you as my Lord and Savior thank you for the gift of salvation in Jesus name I pray amen hear me and hear me well if you prayed this prayer sincerely for the first time in your life and you mean it in your head and your heart salvation is yours is it really that easy yes because you're not saved by your works you're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And so that prayer is just the start, is not the finish. And so if you're here right now, you prayed that prayer, you meant that prayer, you've never been baptized, you want a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, or you've been baptized but you didn't understand what it meant and now you going like, I get it now. And I want a meaningful relationship. If that's you, I just want you to do God this favor. Just hold up your hand right now. Just hold up your hand. If that prayer was meant for you, just hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. Hear me and hear me well. If you got your hand up, please come on down. I don't want you to leave this place without knowing that you can have a relationship with the God of the universe right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I see some that are coming. 
If that prayer, if that prayer was meant for you, I want you to go ahead and have the courage to come on down. We, we ain't going to force you. We ain't going to force you. But we are going to ask you to make a decision. That is your confession. That is your confession. Come on. Let's celebrate those. Walk them all the way down. Walk them all the way down. Walk them all the way down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Will there be another? I see some that are coming from the balcony. Come on. Let's give God praise as they come. Will there be another? 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 Here's my second call. My second call is for those who know who Jesus Christ is. You know, you, you've been part of the church, but as of lately, you haven't been connected to a church. And please, ma'am, please, sir, don't bite the fruit of the culture who says you don't need the local church. You need the local church and the local church needs you. Don't don't bite the foolishness of the culture who say I ain't got to I ain't got to go to church in order to worship God. God did not save you to be a long range of Christian. Come on. Let's bless God for these brothers that are coming. Sit her down. Sit her down just for a moment. Just sit her down. God bless you. Yeah, let her have a seat. 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 So if you're here right now, and you fall in one of these three categories. Number one, you're here. You know who Jesus Christ is in the partner of your sin. You've been saved, but you're not connected to a local church. I would love to be your pastor. And these men and women here at St. Paul would love to be your brothers and sisters. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Amen. So if you're here right now, if you're here right now, you're not part of a local church. If you're not part of a local church or... You've been a part. God bless you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. St. Paul, can we celebrate those that are having the courage to walk? We can do a whole lot better. Walk them all the way down. I don't want nobody to come down by themselves. Come on, let's celebrate those that are coming. Come on, St. Paul. Come on, St. Paul. Come on, St. Paul. Come on, St. Paul. Will there be another? Will there be another? If you're not part of a local church, I would love to be your pastor. If you're here on a temporary assignment, either for work, for school, or for the military. You don't want to give up your membership at your home church. You can roll with us under what is called Watch Care. Or, and here's the best one, if you are part, been a part of St. Paul, but you got disconnected either because of COVID or something else, and you want to renew your membership here at St. Paul, we would love to have you to come back home. So if you fall in one of those three categories, as we lift this song right now, it musically, would you come? Will there be another? Will there be another? Any other man, woman, boy, or girl that fall in one of those categories, we invite you to come right now. You'll be able to sing that song, I Am Redeemed. Brought with a price, Jesus has changed my whole life. Will there be another? 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 Do we have anybody else that falls in this category? Do we have anybody else that will fall into this category? Anybody else? 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 Do we have someone else that is coming? Are they coming? Walk them all the way down. Walk them all the way down. Come on, St. Paul. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Walk them all the way down. Walk them all the way down. Where they at? Walk them all the way down. Will there be another? 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 Amen, 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 amen. All right, deacons, you can return to your stations. You can return to your station. St. Paul, can you help me to celebrate those that have had the courage to walk? Oh, we could do a whole lot better than that. We could do a whole lot better than that. First of all, first of all, you know why you had to join today? Because you got on the same shoes that I got on. All right. All right. <laughs> Amen. First of all, let me say welcome. Welcome. Thank you all for having the courage to make this journey. And we're looking forward to doing life with you all. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have you to follow our 
intake team, they're going to take you uh, in the back, help you to understand your reason for coming, and let you know what the next steps are. I believe Reverend Richardson told me we have almost 50 some folks that's supposed to go through new members class. Amen. That will be starting sometime in, in April. Um, and so if you all decide to do life with us, uh, you'll go through that class. I will teach that class so you'll get to know me on a deeper level. But until then, I'm going to ask all of our intake team, hold your hand up. Would you all follow these little people there? As you all go, I'm going to shake your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Follow them. God bless you, sir. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Look at all these men. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. 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 Come on, St. Paul. Let's give God praise. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. St. Paul, we can do a whole lot better than that. Come on, let's give God praise. God is great and greatly to be praised. We're about to get out of here. Deacons, I need you to go ahead and head to the gym. All of our deacons, I need you to head to the gym. All of our deacons, if you would, head to the gym um, for the meet and greet. I need you all to help me to celebrate our young people again for being ushers and singing and giving their gift of time and music and service. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless God bless you all. Deacons, you may be excused to head to um, to head to the gym for the meet and greet. So if you want to do the meet and greet, you can just head out through this door to meet and greet your deacon. All right. Let's stand. We've come to worship, we now depart to serve. Why do we do what we do? Because the Lord has what? Need of it. So your work, your witness does not go unnoticed. Trust me, God has a reward for you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you for this Palm Sunday. And we let our lives be the palm branches in the culture to let the culture know that you are our king. Not Biden, not Trump, not any other man or woman you are our king and as we worship you O oh god not only in worship but also through our service empower us to keep your name lifted up and not unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with all exceeding joy to the wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore let us sing the doxology together praise god from whom all blessings flow children oh, open up that organ Elson oh, come on Demond oh, amen go in peace I 
I love you, but God loves you more. Have a blessed week in the Lord.